All right, so today what we're going to do is a demonstration of a dilution, as well as a titration to check how your dilution concentration went. Um, so what we want to do when we start is we want to make sure that we have all of our glassware ready at our station. This is going to be an individual lab, just like the titration was for the monoprotic and diprotic. And so you're going to need each of these things of glassware per person. So you want to make sure you have a 25 mil graduated cylinder. You want to make sure you have a 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask. And then you want to make sure that you have a 50 mil beaker. I call this a baby beaker, so you want to have a baby beaker at your station. You want to make sure that you rinse all three of these things for yourself. The only thing that needs to be dried out is the 50 mil graduated cylinder. You don't want any extra water in there because when you go to do your dilution mixing, if you have extra water in here, that might affect your dilution. That would be considered a human error and not a source of error, so be careful with that. The other thing that you want to make sure that you have at your station is a squirt water bottle as well as a beaker filled with water and some pipettes. It's just easier if all of this stuff is ready to go when you start. <clears throat> Once you have all of that ready, your teacher is going to come around and give you a target acid molarity. Everybody in the class is going to have a different target acid molarity. So for this example, since 23 is my favorite number, my target acid molarity is 0.23. What we're going to do with that is I'm going to dilute a concentrated acid, and it's going to be a concentrated hydrochloric acid solution. Today, our concentrated hydrochloric acid solution concentration is 0.538 molar. This might change day by day, depending on how the acid is settling out. So your teacher will have that on the board updated every day. We'll check that in the mornings when we get to school. So what we're gonna do is we wanna make a 25 mils. And that's really important that we check 25 mils. So we want 25 mils of a 0.23 molar solution. So there's my target acid molarity. So that's again gonna be different for everybody. And I'm gonna use my concentrated acid molarity there. <clears throat> I'm going to use the dilution equation. The dilution equation is M1V1 equals M2V2. So my M1 is my concentrated acid at the 0.538 molar. My V1 is my target volume. I've got to figure out how much of that acid I need to make my dilution. 0.23 is my target molarity. And then 25 mils is the total volume that I'd like to make. When I do that calculation, I end up getting 10.687 on my calculator. When we are using burettes, we have to remember that they only read to the tenths place. So you have to make sure that you round correctly. And this can count as a source of error because I'm not gonna be able to get 10.687 mils out of the burette. What I have to do now is round this correctly. So I'm gonna round that six, that eight rounds that six up to a seven. So I'm gonna get 10.7 mils of 0.538 molar hydrochloric acid out of my dilution acid burette. So again, make sure that you round correctly there. Once you figure out your calculation, you're going to take your sheet of paper with your lab on it, and you're gonna come up to the front where your dilution acid is, and you're gonna take your graduated cylinder, and actually what you wanna do first is at your station, because that's where your squirt water bottle is, is you wanna fill a little bit of water into your graduated cylinder. And I'm gonna just use the squirt water bottle because it's easier. So I'm gonna put about five mils of water into my graduated cylinder. The reason why we do this is we never add water to acid. We always add acid to water. So around five mils. I don't have to get exactly five mils. Once you have a little bit of water in the bottom of your graduated cylinder, you're gonna come up to the front. At this point, it's really important that you record your start value. So right now I'm gonna record my start value. I'm gonna read it and record it. And then what I would do is calculate. So if I need 10.7 mils, I'm gonna calculate what my start value is and I'm gonna figure out what my end value should be. If you go over on this one, you have to start over because you don't have the correct acid in your graduated cylinder. Your concentration will be off once you get done. So it's really important that you're careful. So I'm gonna take my initial reading, I'm gonna do my calculation, I'm gonna figure out where I need to stop. So then I know exactly where I need to stop. So I'm gonna get my acid into my graduated cylinder here. And then I'm gonna record my final volume because even though I know I want 10.7 mils, recording your start and end value is still good lab practice. You wanna make sure you have all of your data points down. So once I get my total acid concentrate and I record that on my data table in my lab, I'm gonna go back to my station and I'm going to use the squirt bottle again, and I'm going to fill this 
to 25 mils. So just like when we did our Beer's Law lab, where we made our concentration solution, we don't want to go over 25 mils because that's going to affect the concentration of the solution, just like it would affect our dilution solution here. So I'm going to fill up to right below 25, and then I'll use my pipette to get right to 25. So I'm going to use my squirt bottle. Again, this is just easier. You don't want to sit there and pipette out 25 mils into a graduated cylinder. It would take way too long. So then, good lab practice, I'm going to get level with my graduated cylinder. And I'm going to get it right to 25 mils. So now that I'm at 25 mils, I need to mix my solution. So I'm going to use my beaker that's dry, and I'm going to mix my solution. And I would say a couple of times is adequate. So here's time two. Once I've mixed it a couple of times, you're going to leave the solution in your 50 mil, or in your 50 mil beaker, and then we want to titrate it. Like, I, I don't know what my concentration is. So that's, I've made my dilution. So the dilution is not that difficult. But I have no idea what the concentration of this is. So how I figure that out is I'm going to do a titration, just like you did with the monoprotic and diprotic labs. And so I'm going to use 10 mils of this. I'm going to take this beaker and I'm going to pour out 10 mils into this graduated cylinder. So once I do that, I'm going to probably pour to under 10 mils because again, you don't want to pipe it out 10 mils. That would take forever. And I'm going to use my pipette again. And I'm going to get right to 10 mils. Get an eye level with the graduated cylinder, all of those things that you learned in our first lab. When you are done with that, save your solution because you might have to titrate again. So be really careful, make sure nobody dumps this out. Save your solution. So now I'm going to take my 10 mils of my concentrate, or of my dilution, excuse me, and I'm going to pour it into my Erlenmeyer flask. Now remember, anytime we're doing transfer and we assume an amount of something is going into something, so I'm assuming that all 10 mils are going into here, we have to remember that adhesion is at play here. So adhesion of the water molecules to the side of the graduated cylinder in the acid solution is going to cause a source of error. The other thing that we need to take in, into account here is the fact that this is not the most accurate measuring device for 10 mils of an acid. If we had enough burettes, we would give everybody an individual burette so that they could use that to get their 10 mils of an acid. But unfortunately, we don't, so we're going to use our 25 mil graduated cylinder. So this isn't the best measuring device as well. Once I pour my 10 mils of my acid into my Erlenmeyer flask, I have to remember to put my phenolphthalein in there or it will never turn pink. So now I've got my phenolphthalein in here and I'm going to do a titration to make sure that I've done my dilution concentration correctly. Once I get to my station, I'm going to record my start value of my base and then I'm going to start my titration. So I've got the start value and I'm going to record it. It's the drop and swirl just like you did with the monoprotic and diprotic. So you guys should be pretty good at this point in terms of titrating. So the pink is starting to stick around a little bit longer. So I'm going to swirl. And notice you kind of want to swirl sometimes. I, in my demonstration last time I swirled where it was kind of near the glass tip of the burette. Be careful when you do that. I've done this for many years, so I've, I'm a little bit more comfortable. When you swirl, I recommend taking your Erlenmeyer flask out from underneath your burette and swirling just so you don't break that piece of equipment. So I'm going to, I got the pink stuck around a little bit longer, so I'm going to do drop by drop now. Make sure that you use your squirt bottle and get all of the base off the edge and end of the burette. So again, I'm going to take it away from the bottom of the burette and swirl. Pink stuck around a little bit longer, but it didn't stay. So I've got to make sure I get, get one or two more drops in there. Make sure you get all the base off the end of the, ass, of the, of the burette. So this one looks like it might stay around. If you're not sure on the pink color, you can use a white piece of paper at your station. Now, if you notice, when I did the swirl here, 
the pink stuck around for quite some time, but you kind of got to be patient, and it disappeared, so I've got to go another drop. It's a little bit darker than the last time when I did my demonstration, but again, you never know how this works until you do your calculations. And also, if you notice, if you swirl a little bit, it'll tend to get a little bit lighter. So this pink is definitely sticking around. All right, that looks like a great titration. So it kind of started a little dark, so sometimes people might have a tendency to panic and think that they put too much in, but you just gotta swirl and give it a second to set in. So it ended up being a nice light pink. So this is a great color. So what I'm gonna do is take my end reading of my base. <clears throat> I'm gonna record it on my paper. <clears throat> so for this lab, my start reading ended up being three mils. My end reading <clears throat> ended up being 25.4 mils. So my total mils of my base ended up being 22.4. What I'm going to do with that number is use it in my titration equation. So we need to remember that our chemical formula and our chemical equation for this is hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide yields sodium chloride and water. Remember, HOH is another way to write water, so you can write it H2O or HOH, either is correct. And we're going to use our titration math, either using our T-chart or algebraically, to check our molarity. So 22.4 was my mils, so I'm going to, in my T-chart, put 0 0.0224, and I'm going to use my calculation. Now, something that happens, especially in the T-chart, that people mess up with, is they want to tell me that they used for example, 10.7 mils. But they didn't use 10.7 mils to titrate. They used 10 mils to titrate. So really be careful here not to fall into that trap because I put 10 mils into my graduated cylinder and I titrated that 10 mils. Once I do that calculation using the T-chart equation, it gives me 0.224 molar. Using the algebraic equation, I'm gonna put in my 22.4 mils into my algebraic equation, and I'm going to calculate the same thing. It'll give me the same answer. So I'm going to go 22.4 molar. What do I compare that to? I'm going to compare that to my target acid molarity that everybody gets individually, which is the 0.23 molar. Right here and right here is where I use that. When you do that, I'm going to calculate my percent error. In this case, once I do my calculations, my percent error ends up being 2.6%. At that point, I would be done with the dilution lab. In this lab, unlike the monoprotic and diprotic titrations where you have to get a 5% error or less, if you get a 10% error or less with the dilution lab, you can move on and you can be done. If you get more than a 10% error, you need to either retitrate, you can retitrate the solution that you left in your baby beaker at your station, if that also gives you greater than 10% error, then you need to do a new dilution and then titrate to check to try to get under a 10% error. Once you're done with that, you're done with the dilution lab, and that means that you're done with the whole acid-base lab. So there you go. Science!